creating a study to perform a stress analysis, we need to create a simulation first. So to create a simulation, we have to create a study tool. Uh, we have to use the create study tool. Uh, we can find this in the manage tab up here. When we click on this create study, we get this dialog box. Now we can give it a name. Uh, so I might call it a static analysis, uh, maybe something like I-beam one or something like that, right? Uh, so uh, our design objective, our design objective is to determine whether it's a single point or a parametric dimension. If it's a single point, uh, then there will be only one set of geometry data uh, in the simulation. If it's a parametric, uh, then we'll optimize geometry by changing design parameters. So let's go to our study type. And a study type is we want to determine uh, the analysis type and the contact type. So in the static analysis, uh, we're going to use this radio button is, is uh, checked by default. And uh, as a result, we can come in here and say we want to check the box if we want to detect and remove uh, the solid body uh, which uh, on which the enough constraints are not defined. So in this case, the load, um, uh, the load after the removal of the solid body must remain balanced. So we can turn that on or off. Uh, and so down in our modal analysis, this radio box here, uh, we come in here and tell it the number of modes uh, this is the number of resident frequencies that will be found in the analysis. And we also can set the frequency range. Uh, so we can set that, uh, the range of frequency that is in our desired analysis. We can uh, compute preloaded modes. Uh, so this is uh, selected to compute preloaded stress on the model and then compute the resident frequencies. Uh, or enhance accuracy. Uh, this checkbox will improve the accuracy um, by a magnitude of 10. We come down to our shape generator. In our shape generator, this is used the specified values of tolerances, or excuse me, their shape generator is used to help optimize a design in our lightweight, structurally efficient, and using stable parts. So it's using a strategy to maximize the stiffness and its efficiency uh, to create uh, this part. Uh, we'll come down into our contacts area. In our contacts area, uh, we can set our tolerance. This is the tolerance between our contact surfaces or our edges. Uh, over here in our types, we have our types can be bonded uh, separation or we can have it being a spring. We can set our normal stiffness. Uh, we can specify the normal stiffness for the spring contacts, contacts, excuse me, tangential uh, stiffness. Uh, we can set our, specify our equivalent tangential stiffness for spring contact, uh, contacts. And down here we have a shell connector tolerance. Uh, this is, uh, will specify the tolerance to fill the gap between two mid surfaces. And if the gap is smaller than 1.750, a connector will be built to create between them. If we jump over to our model state, this is used to specify our assembly representations of our simulation. So in this case, we can pick our assembly design options. So if we have representations, we can pick our design view. Uh, so we can pick the option of our design view representation to be used. If we have positional, this is used to specify the positional representations to be used. 
in the analysis. And then the level of detail, this drop down is used in our assembly uh, to simplify the model uh, so that, that reduces our computational time. And the I part is used to associate the I assembly with the part of the simulation. So this is only if we're using an assembly uh, up here in our model state tab. And so at, at the, we have everything put in, we can say okay. And now we have set up, uh, in this case, we have set up creating a study.